Hi, welcome to Ride Along, Ride Alongside. Today I have before you here the gear clamps. So there's two of these. Um, one gear clamp here, one gear clamp here. And it's a great idea for setting up a single speed um, cog on a Shimano um, style free hub body. I've been using these for uh, quite a few months now. I've actually done uh, two different uh, series over the summer, um, two different race series uh, where I race single speed. And it worked out pretty well. The idea I had initially for the gear clamps was um, to use them for bike packing single speed. So I could uh, I could just remove this outer gear clamp um, while actually on the trail. They take a two and a half mil um, Allen key and you just loosen them up. And the idea was that I would just loosen up this outer one and I would bring along an extra cog, uh, maybe um, one or two teeth larger or smaller than what I was running. I'd be able to just take off the cog and just put on a new one and put the clamp back on and tighten it down. But uh, well, you really need to be efficient with that process with these. It could be a very fast and efficient bike packing setup, but I'd recommend that you bring an extra chain so that you don't have to tension your system. Whether you're using uh, an eccentric bottom bracket, sliding dropouts, um, kind of a rocker dropout style like I have on the El Mariachi, or any other other style really, um, where you're going to be tensioning the same chain but with a cog that has an additional tooth uh, or, or two teeth it's going to be significantly longer if you don't have that extra chain um, that's the appropriate length for the front chain ring and uh, the rear cog so um, so that's what I, I learned is that uh, for doing that fast setup It'd be nice to have two chains as well as two cogs, just so you can get going again quickly, not have to adjust everything as much. The upside to the system is that it's simple. There's there's less spacers, so a little bit lighter weight, but you have these bolts as well. So it may or may not be lighter than the system that you're already using with the lock ring, but. What I really liked about this system was that you didn't need that lock ring. So I didn't need a chain whip or anything to remove my cogs. It's a really nice way if you are racing to just bring in a few cogs, go ride the course, uh, test ride it, and figure out if you need to drop or add a tooth or two um, for the course. Now that being said, I ran single speed um, at this race series and it was a very flat course except for a few short uphill segments so I um, I got first on the first race and then I got second on the second race because the guy had a 3214 setup and he uh, just blew by me I tried to hold on to his wheel and I had no chance because I was running uh, 3218 and uh, so for the next race, I decided to run 32.16, and that was a little bit too close um, to these bolts. So I actually ended up having the chain uh, hit this this uh, bolt a little bit, just a tiny bit. But um, I also had my my chain set up a little bit loose with the the um, tension set up kind of loose. So. Um, I actually threw the chain a couple times and uh, that was problematic. So you can see I wore down this corner putting the chain back on. 
it, it flew onto the inside. So you can get your chain line really dialed in with these, kind of infinitely adjustable, so to speak. You can move uh, these gear clamps wherever you want. It's not you know one or two mil spacers or five mil spacers. It's wherever you want them. So that's a real benefit. But um, I also found, and you might have seen in the beginning of the video, that that um, although these are tight on the um, free hub body, uh, you have to kind of clamp them together before you tighten them down. There was a little bit of play in there, and that was um, somewhat problematic because I didn't have a way to clamp these together that much, whereas with the lock ring, you actually do clamp all of the facers together onto that cog. So it makes for a very tight group of spacers and cog all together. So it's not really moving laterally at all. Whereas this had just the slightest bit of lateral movement. I'm not sure if that's what also led to my chain actually coming off the cog during the race or not, but you can't run uh, less than 16 tooth on here. Uh, you'll end up definitely uh, hitting these uh, two raised um, points uh, with your chain. Um, so that is another downside. So there's pros and cons, but overall I think from, from my single speed use, uh, I prefer these um, night and day over the regular system, mostly because I can change the cogs so quickly, especially if I, have, if I have a chain dedicated to the cog chain ring combination that I'm running, then it's super easy at a race to just change them out. I don't have to mess with that lock ring. I really uh, don't like having to do that. It might seem simple to a lot of you guys, but it's just, it's just a pain in the neck, whereas this is super easy. So, that's my review of the gear clamps. I really like them. I'm going to use them every time I, I use single speed. But those are the pros and cons I've, I've found uh, to this system. I'm Nick from Right Alongside. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If uh, you want to see more content like this, uh, also plus bikes, uh, some gravel bike content we have coming up, then uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, share this if you think somebody else will find it useful. Thanks so much for watching. I have more content for you real soon.